ensure the track is clear of any mess or people. When you see that it will all be boiling down to this very one moment, it's quite uh, nerve-wracking. Accelerating in five, four, three, two, one, go. Well, the general concept of a Hyperloop in a nutshell is that it is a revolutionary mode of transport where we travel inside pods which are levitated in the air through magnetic levitation and these pods travel through low pressure tubes. And because of the lack of air and rolling resistance, uh, Hyperloop vehicles or pods as we like to call them uh, are able to travel at speeds of a thousand kilometers an hour. The goal of previous years was to be able to participate in the SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition and due to circumstances that hasn't happened this year. So now we have set our new goal to be in open air on our own test track in Hilversum where we try to reach a new speed record. Where shall we put this boy? We're building a prototype of, you could call it the locomotive of a Hyperloop. Um, so a prototype of a vehicle that propels along this track. We're going to use an external track which is just under 400 meters and within this 400 meters try and reach the highest speed possible um, and almost certainly break the, the record from our previous teams which was 202 kilometers an hour. It's all about really using every little bit of the track and tuning the system in such a way that we break at the perfect position uh, to not go off the end of the track, stay safe, but to reach the highest speed in the shortest amount of time and distance. Nick, you said that when the bolts must be untorqued in the battery box. Before, okay, then I set that in the installation procedure. What my role in that is to make sure that uh, the best of each department and the best of each subsystem performs as one beautiful machine. You start with. 33 new people that don't know each other, you have no nothing that is already made and you start at the drawing table and then you design it, you build it, you assemble it, you test it and at the end of one year you have this uh, vehicle that can perform at speeds that are really high and that is quite impressive. To explain full functioning and working of the pods, um, I started its core, which is formed by the, the chassis, on which every other system is bolted. The braking system is bolted in the middle. Afterwards, we have the mechanical suspension, which makes sure that the vehicle is straight and level. When those three systems are together, our mechanical part is done. We want to make about four to five wheels out of this piece. So we're making grooves that we know how, uh, where to cut uh, the wheels and then afterwards we'll finalize them with the right fitting and so. On one hand we want to disconnect ourselves completely from the track, but on the other hand we clump ourselves to the track so that we can have the most traction and therefore the most forward force. And when the suspension does not uh, instantly react to an irregularity, they would be hit by the track. But for braking, it would be best to uh, nearly touch the track. Overcoming a one millimeter obstacle is, should not be as difficult as it is. But it's just the uncertainties that you don't know that will form the risk of failure. So we have all these different departments that focus on specific aspects of the run. Propulsion is purely focused on the motors and how to get them as, uh, running as quickly as possible. But these, these motors don't do anything without power, without energy. For this we have two extremely densely packed battery boxes. Both of these systems, the motor controllers and the battery system, they don't work by themselves. These commands 
originate from our software and our hardware, which could be seen as like the glue of the vehicle. The main component is this microcontroller, which runs all the software and via all these connectors is uh, connected to the different subsystems and it reads out sensor data values of all the other subsystems, so speed of the wheels, pressure in the braking tanks, uh, battery voltages to see if the health of the battery is good. By reading out these sensors via the PCB, which from then the PCB spreads out over the whole vehicle uh, with wires to connect and control every subsystem. So today we're at Hilversum at our long test track and the idea is that we push our vehicle even further because at our base in Delft we've already uh, tested until about 20 meters and here we have almost 400 meters. So we increase the distance and we increase the speed so that eventually we're ready for that record attempt. Yeah, we really want to get all the testing done to see the performance differences uh, of our vehicle and uh, see at what points uh, we can really get the edge for the wrecked attempt uh, next week. So, uh, bliksemschicht is uh, <laughs> alles wat aan is, toch? Bliksemschicht is de uitgang. Kijk je doen? Ja, kijk je erin, maar het gaat niet helemaal door. Heb je er al langer? Ja, ik heb al langer. 3, 2, 1. Today is quite a warm day, so the sun warms up both the vehicle and the track. Uh, actually for the track it's quite beneficial because now the uh, beams that hold the track together are more tight. For our vehicle itself it could be uh, potentially um, challenging for both the batteries and uh, some structural elements. I guess everything can kind of go wrong on a day like this. But yeah, the, the main new feature for today is the aeroshell, which we've tested indoors but never on high velocities. Ze zitten vrij hoog, dus je komt er met je handen in. Ze kunnen de MID switches aan. People are definitely nervous on a day like this because here it goes. What is it? 200, 300 kilometers an hour, and it's really fast, and it's just really cool to see, but also really scary because people have designed it themselves, and sometimes they're afraid if everything will hold. We programmed our own control software on the pod and it automates the entire run. But once we press enter, the whole run is autonomous. So before a run, we'll check all the, uh, all the settings and all the data, double check it with multiple people, see if all the systems are all in good health and all ready. And as soon as we know everything's ready, we enter a ready for accelerating state, which turns on all the high voltage systems uh, to power the motor controllers. Uh, and that's when we initiate the run and transition to accelerating state. Yeah. Ensure the track is clear of any mess or people. Accelerating in five, four, three, two, one, go. What? We almost reached our uh, speed of 400 kilometers an hour, but uh, I long for more because I feel that there's uh, more potential in the vehicle. <laughs> the magic barrier of 400. And I think we can still go faster, uh, but we just need to analyze everything and see where we can win, uh, win some speed for next run. At this moment we are looking at the bolt connections and that they are um, at a proper force, that they can support everything uh, and that the suspension uh, is stable because of that. If you do it and the nut eruit falls, then hou the zwaartekracht the bout vast. At the point that we forget that it could go wrong at any place, then it actually will go wrong. Oh, okay, no, it's a tubing and fast. The other side, flexible tubing and fast. 
myself up. My year will be a success when we're standing there at this record attempt and everybody has this feeling of like, we did it guys. How amazing would it be if in 30 years you would travel in the Hyperloop and think that is something I've worked on, that would be truly remarkable. The current Delft Hyperloop record is set at 202 kilometers an hour and it was set by the previous team in the SpaceX tube in LA. Our goal, break that record. We'd like to go above and beyond and we have 386 meters to do so with an acceleration of 2G and a deceleration of 20G. And I'm really happy that you're all here to witness it because this is what we worked for this year and I couldn't be prouder. Let's break that record. Thank you very much. Kijk, we hebben die 400 als een grote barrière. En de volgende echte barrière is als we een beetje in de buurt van de timmer komen. Ik ben confident dat als we vorige keer er zo dichtbij zaten, uh, dat we er sowieso overheen gaan. Because of all the tests we've done throughout the year. Everybody's gaining more and more faith in our system. We've, instead of just designing it, we've also proved it multiple times. The, the only real difference today is we're really pushing everything to the limit and getting everything optimal instead of testing like different aspects of the system. Uh, but everything's been tested um, and we haven't had any weird issues, so I'm, I'm positive. After having worked on this for a whole year, putting all our energy, dreams, sweat into it, um, when you recognize, when you see that it will all be boiling down to this very one moment, it is quite uh, nerve-wracking. Heel veel succes, Hyperloop 4! Yo! Ik ben in principe 3, Robert en ik. Zeg dat het oké is? Ik ben bang dat de ladies hem volgen. If the track is clear of any mess or people, we are going to accelerate in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We saw some sparks, kind of didn't want to expect the worst, wasn't quite, nothing really bad happened. Once we looked at the data we knew pretty quickly we saw one of the motor controllers lost connection and that triggered the emergency brake, so kind of put one and one together. So it's kind of bittersweet, I'm, I'm glad we beat it and beat it well. But personally, like the 400 would have definitely made my day even more. Which is really a bummer, but there's nothing to do about it. That's the thing, if you have one chance, then it's all or nothing. And we reached 360, which is really nice. We hoped for more, but we're still very happy. It's just a crazy experience, this whole year working 40 to sometimes 80 hours a week, uh, spending all the time with all the colleagues you have, all really working and pushing the technology further. It has been an amazing year, which also, but also a lot of fun. But at the end of the day, we have uh, set an uh, amazing uh, achievement uh, about which all of us, every single team member can be proud, including myself. And I think especially the long shifts with everybody when you spend hours and hours trying to fix a problem and then finally fix it in the middle of the night or early morning. Those are the kind of moments I think we'll remember the most. 
today was nice, but the whole year was nice, and it's, it's the overall experience. And today is just a part of that, and I think if I look back, I'll remember how challenging it was sometimes, but also how much I enjoyed it.